So we're back in the Piranha Plant class, and we're going to edit it and add some things. Um, so the first thing is, what if I don't necessarily want um, this thing to start out with the default values of red and true that I've that I've set here? Um, what I can do is I can make um, another constructor that lets me choose what values to initialize to. So this guy um, that we wrote it previously is what's called the default constructor, which means it has no parameters and it just sets to some default values. But I can overload this and write an alternate version that takes in a string um, for the color, let's just call it C, the parameter for color. Um, I can also add in a parameter to represent the, the safety true or false value, um, but I don't have to. So I can just have it initialized to a different color. Um, so I'm going to go and take this guy and implement it back in my uh, CPP file, my implementation file. So I have to write my class name again. Here is the top of this. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the color now to whatever came in as a parameter, and I'm still going to set safe to true so that it starts out true. And now, depending on um, whether I want the default constructor or the not default constructor, I can change how I uh, instantiate it here. So let me get rid of some of this stuff, actually. Um, so I can have multiple uh, piranha plants. So let's make one with the non-default constructor. We'll call it plant two. And let's make it be blue. Okay. So this guy will still have all the other um, methods available to it. Um, so it can rise and lower. You can see that, that Visual Studio is offering me these uh, options. Um, but it lets me choose an alternate color to start with. Okay. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, I can't tell what color they are once you create them um, because this little... This, uh, this data member here is private, which means I can't get to it out here. Let me prove that to you, if I, even if I wanted to check. So I might be like, I want to see what the color is. Um, you see, it gives me an error because this is not an accessible data member because I've marked it private. I've done that on purpose because I want to sort of data hide um, what's happening in my class. So I am allowed to make a, another kind of function in my class that's called an accessor method. Um, and what that does is it lets me see or check what value something is. So if I want to check the color, then I can make an accessor method. Um, a lot of times they start with the word get because I'm accessing the private value. I'm going to call it get color, and it's going to return whatever color the plant is to me as a string. Okay, so let me take this and go and implement it in my CPP file. Let's just do it right here. Okay. Add in my scope resolution operator. And literally, accessor methods, um, all they do is, is retrieve the value so that you can see what it is. So all I got to do inside here is say return color. So um, because this function or, or method is inside of my class, it has access to this private variable. Um, and now in main, if I'd like to see out uh, what color these things are, I can call that accessor method. So that will tell me what color plant one is. Let's add a label in here. Plant one is... Oops. Ah. Okay, and then I can do the same thing with plant two to see what color it is. Let's just run this thing to verify. So plant one is red, plant two is blue. Um, again, this thing is called an accessor method because it's accessing the value that is saved inside one of my private data members or variables. And the reason I want to do that is I can't get to that stuff out here in, in my driver, um, which is also known as a client, unless I specifically write a method in my class to let me see what's in there. Okay. Um, now I want to make one more little change to this accessor method. And it is, um, this guy is simply accessing a value. So I can make a promise that this function is not going to change anything inside my class because it's just retrieving the value. It's not altering it. 
and I can add a little thing on the end here, um, just the word const, and that is a promise that this function um, will not change anything. And in fact, it prevents you from writing any code inside of it that would change anything. So let me go and update my implementation as well. Tack that on the end. And now this guy, um, even if I try to, uh, won't let me do that because I've promised that this thing won't let me edit stuff. And let's just verify it still works. Yes. Okay. Um, now what if I have a plant and for some reason I want to uh, change the color of it? Um, so let's make a function called change color. Uh, I'm going to put it here. Change color. And I'll let the client or driver set a new color for it. So let's give it a color C. This guy, I do want to have change things, so I'm not going to mark it const. Let me grab this and move it back in here. Okay, let's paste. Stick my scope resolution operator in there. Okay, and now I'm going to make color equals C. Okay, so let's go out to the driver and try it out. So let's see. Let's change plant one to green. And then just real fast, um, check its color. To make sure the change will happen. Let's run this thing. And there, next to my little message here, is the word green. So yes, the change did take effect because it was previously red, and now it's green. When I write these functions that let me, um, or their specific, their specific purpose is to change a value, I call these mutator methods, because um, mutate means to change, right? Versus this guy, which is accessor, which means it's not changing, it's just accessing a value. So these are some specific um, sort of terminology you can associate with these particular types of functions.